And good morning, everybody. My name is Nicholas Whitaker. I am the Media Outreach Lead on the News Lab at Google. I want to thank you for joining us today. This is the first of six uh, Hangouts, office hours, specifically uh, around AMP, Accelerated Mobile Pages. Today we have a great lineup of guests, including Richard uh, Gingras, who's going to be talking about AMP uh, and here to answer your questions. Uh, you can find out more about the News Lab at g.co slash News Lab. Uh, we're going to have uh, additional tutorials and trainings around AMP in the the next coming months after this Hangout series is over. And if you're interested in any other tools that Google has that might be useful for journalism, that's a really great place to check out uh, to find more information. Uh, you can also find links to our social media accounts. Uh, you've likely already found our Google Plus page if you, uh, you're watching this video, uh, as well as our YouTube account. Uh, if you have questions or comments during this office hour, please, by all means, send those in to us via Twitter, uh, via the comment section on the Google Plus uh, page here, uh, or any other means. We'll catch that and answer those questions. Uh, for those of you who have already asked a few questions, we will be getting to those later on in the session today. Uh, but uh, I will step out of the way and let the experts talk in a little bit more detail. Uh, Stacy, you want to take it from here? Great. Thanks, Nick. Really excited to have everyone join us. So quickly, you see a lot of faces uh, in this Hangout on Air. We have Richard Jingris, who is the head of news at Google. And he's going to be kicking off these Hangout on Air series, really giving the overview and vision of accelerated mobile pages. Exactly what we have in mind, not just for Google, but for the entire project ecosystem. And we're lucky enough to have uh, Stefan from The Guardian. He's their web developer to be peppering Richard with uh, various more technical questions. And we also have Scott Leadingham from SPJ, the Society for Professional Journalists. So we'll be asking a lot of questions more on the editorial side. Um, and as Nick mentioned, everyone watching live from your newsrooms at home on your couch, please ask us any questions you would like. Richard will do his best to answer them. So Richard, take it away. Thanks, Stacy, uh, and, and, and glad to have you all on the uh, on the hangout today. Uh, so, what I would like to do is is begin by uh, giving a bit of uh, uh, introduction uh, to the AMP project for those who aren't as familiar uh, with uh, the core aspects of the vision, um, as well as give you a sense of how we got here, um, how we uh, and the larger collaboration of publishers and technology. Uh, providers are are engaging and collaborating with the effort to uh, uh, to put it in place and continue to evolve it. Uh, so let me take you through that intro, uh, give you a sense of exactly where we are with the project, uh, and then we can open it up for for all of your questions. Uh, you know, let's just start from the beginning. Why AMP? Um, it it really starts uh, from our perspective with recognizing. Uh, which came as a result of many discussions with people in the industry uh, over the last uh, uh, eight to ten months or so uh, regarding the key issues in the ecosystem today, uh, in the web uh, ecosystem today in particular. Uh, and there are two, of course, that, that quickly come uh, to the fore. Uh, one is simply the issue of performance. Uh, web performance on average is, is not, uh, I think, what any of us would like to see. And this is particularly problematic uh, on mobile devices, particularly problematic in parts of the world where uh, data plans are expensive uh, and, and constrained. Uh, we think there's a, a, a great opportunity to address that and a great need to address that. So again, can we make the, the web as, as fast and, and, and compelling as we all know uh, it can be? The second issue uh, was uh, the, the, the many suboptimal ad behaviors that we're seeing in the ecosystem. I think we're all aware of this. We all see it. Uh, when we load pages today, uh, both the length of time it takes for everything to load, the jankiness of behavior when when uh, various components are loading into the page, making it difficult, uh, obviously, for the user experience, difficult to, uh, to really enjoy the content that the user came there for. Uh, that, obviously, is, is deeply problematic a as well. Uh, both of these issues. I think it's important to know, and I think we all do know, have very significant secondary impacts. Uh, when we look at the suboptimal ad behaviors, clearly that will have an impact on engagement. I suspect is having an impact on engagement. I know, I expect all of us here have had that experience where you simply abandon pages because of the length of time it takes 
or the, the janky behavior in trying to consume the content. It's obviously had the secondary impact of, of stimulating an unfortunate rise in, in ad blockers uh, around the world. In, in some areas worse than others. In, in Germany, ad blocker percentages are now up in the 30 to 40 percent range. Uh, clearly this is a uh, uh, can be hugely impactful in terms of the revenue lines that uh, uh, that publishers require to continue to sustain and be profitable in their endeavors. The second impact, and, and, and this is sort of comes from the performance, is, is I think it leaves uh, uh, the publishing ecosystem um, and the web itself vulnerable to proprietary platforms uh, who can uh, indeed, because of their highly managed environments, uh, provide uh, a, a faster experience. And of course I'm talking about social networks, messaging apps, and so on. And I certainly fully understand uh, their efforts to create uh, crisp experiences and their efforts to work with publishers to, to leverage their proprietary environments. Uh, but I think all of us uh, know uh, that uh, for the web ecosystem to really thrive, uh, we really need the open distribution environment of the web. Uh, and so uh, when I look at the core objectives of AMP, it's how do we take, given these issues, and create appropriate and compelling experiences for consumers around the world so that they can take full advantage of the web and take full advantage of the products that you offer and how can we do this in such a fashion uh, that publishers remain in control of their content uh, in control over their business models uh, and in a sense in control of their destinies um, that at core um, is what we're looking to accomplish with AMP um, we felt that uh, as we assessed the problem and, and looked at the situation with uh, uh, solutions in the proprietary space, Facebook Instant Articles for instance, we felt it was important to really take and address this uh, at a foundational level. As I said, let's address it at the web, level of the web. And in doing so, let's adhere to the web principles of openness uh, into the web technologies that all of us have enjoyed uh, over the last two decades of the evolution of the web. Um, and, and that is indeed the, the philosophy we're adhering to, um, is, is this is about making the web healthy and vibrant and fast. Um, and with AMP, to do that with full functionality. Um, I, I want to be clear that uh, I think all of us and our objectives with AMP, it's not just about articles. Uh, it's about uh, consumer experiences, rich consumer experiences that you can provide. Uh, and it also goes beyond leaf pages and, and we can talk about that.